For the third section of the code, we need to consider what output we want. For a plane wave propagating in free space, the electric and the magnetic fields only differ by a factor of eta naught, the characteristic impedance of free space, which is about equal to 377 ohms. So as a result, if we just plot EZ or HY, we'll already know what is happening with the other field. It will look the same, and it'll just have a different amplitude. So for simplicity, let's just plot EZ for now. To plot the electric fields, it helps as you're getting started to plot all the electric fields in the grid at every time step, so you can see what's going on. So to do this, you can open the figure. Here I just am using figure number one. And then plot the EZs. I like to plot thicker lines with a thickness of two points so we can see them better, especially when if we ever copy the figures into a Word document or somewhere else. So you can plot your 1D easy array using this command here, and this changes the line width. By the way, if you're ever not sure what a MATLAB command does, you can type help and then the command name, like plot, and MATLAB will give you a description of what that command does. So help plot will give you all sorts of information about plotting, including commands for adding legends and subplots and so forth. It's also good practice to label your axes and increase the font size, again because it's easier to read the font when you copy the figures into other documents. You can do this by using what's written here. Here we're setting the title, and I'm changing the font size. The X label, they will label the X axis, and we're plotting EZ array every time step, so the X axis here is the grid coordinate, and the Y axis we can label it as being the EZ component. Lastly, when you run your code, since the grid is very small and is only one-dimensional, it turns out that the code is going to run very fast. And as a result, if you just run your code and plot the EZ every, EZs every time step, you're only going to be able to see the very last plot that your code creates. All the plots are going to be created so fast you won't even see them. <laughs> so for now, we actually want to purposely slow the code down. So you can do this by adding a pause command within your time stepping loop. This slows down the code just enough so that you can see all the plots from every time step. And actually for this, I think it works better if you just use 0 0.1. Later on, we'll adjust this. Okay, well for the rest of your time today, see if you can get your code written and working. Remember to add comments throughout your code. Now just so you can test your code and see if it's working, Try these dummy values to start with. Set just to start with, we'll click a nice even number. Set I max equal to 200, so we have 200 grid cells in our model. N max, we're going to run it for 50 time steps to start. For the source, you already know it's at I max divided by 4, and it's on for 20 time steps, and then we turn it off. Now for delta x, which I'll write with a D, dx in your computer program, uh, I recommend you do not call it delta x, that you call it delta instead. And the reason I recommend this is because when we go to two dimensions and three dimensions later, we're going to use cubic grid cells. And it will be easier if we don't need to separately keep track of delta x, delta y, and delta z. So we're just going to use delta for all three spatial dimensions. So just remember, uh, that it stands for the spatial dimensions of your grid cells. So we're just going to set that equal to 1, that's just 1 meter, a nice even number. Lastly, let's consider the time step increment. If a wave in free space propagates at the speed of light, then we can consider how long it will take the wave to propagate across one grid cell. This is equal to dx, which is in meters, divided by c, which is in meters per second. So we're making the units work out here, so we're going to get an answer that is the time in seconds that it takes to propagate across one grid cell. So is this a good value to choose for dt? Well, it's not clear. We're going to look into this. 
but we know the error for the central differencing reduces as dt approaches zero. So as we reduce dt, it'll, our solution will get better and better. So let's start with something a bit smaller than this for now, just to be safe. Let's set dt equal to half of this number that we just calculated. So we're going to take dt is 0.5 times dx and divided by c. Now remember, c is another fundamental parameter, so I again make, recommend that you define it down to at least eight decimal places. If your code is working correctly, you should see a wave propagating away from your source at i equal i max divided by 4, so that would be 50. i is equal to 50 for our current setup. And after 20 time steps, the, sh the source should turn off. At the end of the 50 time steps, your EZ plot should look like this. Looking at this result, we might notice that the step function does not seem to be propagating away from the source very well. While the source only has a value of 1, or 0, we're getting electric field values propagating away that are not equal to 1 or 0. Next time we'll investigate what might be causing this and how we can improve our model.